Hello, Metal Rules, and greetings from the Too Mean to Die Tour 2023. It only took two years to get here. It's been great. It's been absolutely stellar. Lots of sellouts, uh, crazy crowds. Um, we're really enjoying it. The band's firing on all cylinders. Couldn't ask for a better tour. Um, we've just been swapping them out. There's like three or four songs that we change around. Um, just to keep it fresh for us and to keep it fresh for there are people who go to multiple shows, you know, a couple nights in a row, so at least they get to see some different things too, you know. Um, that's all there is to it, really. It's, you know, we'll just roll the dice and see what comes up that day. Uh, I don't know that there's anything I'd like to add that we haven't done. Um, you know, it's, it's getting to the point now where there's so much material to choose from. You got to make a choice what you're going to do on this tour. And, you know, it's, it's getting harder and harder because there's so much material, old and new. Um, I think if anything, if, if I was going to add anything to this one, I would like to do uh, Sucks to Be You. <laughs> yeah, because we don't really didn't get to tour at all with it you know I mean last summer we did festivals and not all that many we've done a handful of uh, US shows um, we did an, a tour in October but I mean it's not like we've been beating it to death so um, it still feels quite fresh you know I think so right. and it right. does to the audience so yeah More people involved. Let's put it that way. Um, uh, Martin really stepped up quite a bit and uh, had his hand in a few things with Wolf. Uh, still basically the same kind of process, though. I mean, either, either you start with a riff or you start with music or you start with lyrics. For instance, uh, let's say The Undertaker or Zombie Apocalypse. These are just lyrics that I sent to Wolf and he sent back the song. So, um, it's, uh, not, no two songs are written the same way. You know, they never were. Um, I guess it was a little, a little uh, challenging this time without Peter, but you do what you have to do. Um, and I think it worked out well. I think we're looking forward to the next one now, so. Uh, I think you're pretty right on on saying that. Yeah, I mean, new new people always creates new energy, and no tension is a beautiful thing. So, you know, I mean, this this it's never been like this. I mean, there's there's six of us now, and there's no no egos, no bullshit, no nothing. You know, it's just we just laugh all the time. So, <laughs> which is good. So, in a way, you are saying that. There were some tensions in the band. Oh, for the last couple of years there were. Um, and and I still am not sure why. So okay. yeah, that's a good that's a damn good question. Um, I mean, well it's the music obviously. I think a lot of it has to do with Wolf and his guitar sound too. You know, and uh, it's just the feel of the songs. You, you, you know, especially the old ones, the the classics are. When you play them, you just feel like <laughs> you're part of that. You know, you have to be. 
and we want them to sound like the, the, the originals, like the classics, you know? You don't want it to sound like a different band. You want it to sound like that band. So, and I think we, I think we do a pretty good job of it, mm -hmm. you know? It was, it was just a freak thing. Um, somebody mentioned my name to them because they were looking to possibly put the band back together and they couldn't come to terms with Udo. And somebody mentioned their name to me and my phone rang one day. It was just fate. It's like I didn't go out looking for it. They came and found me. So. It was great, actually. We uh, jammed quite a bit that day and, uh, and we had a good time. And, and I really didn't think anything was going to come of it after that. And then two weeks later, I got the phone call. I don't think they auditioned anyone else. Okay. I, you could ask Wolf that, but I don't think they did. Yeah, being scared shitless. <laughs> um, actually, that, that's not quite... I mean, it was a lot of, lot of stuff to remember and a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of pressure. But luckily it was in New York and it was a lot of my people there, you know, people that, I, you know, I've seen in the audience for most of my career. So um, the next night after that was the rough one in Lithuania. It was like, what am I getting into now? <laughs> In 2010, yeah. wow, I vaguely, yeah. I remember, I, a lot of that whole tour is a blur, okay. you know, that was just, uh, it was a whirlwind. I, I definitely remember the two ACDC shows we did, that was, well, that was a dream come true, so, but that, that, that tour was pretty much just a whirlwind for me. You know? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Early on. Yeah. You know? But like, I, I would say probably 1980, 81, we were doing stuff off of Breaker. Yeah. And then when uh, Wrestles and Wild came out, we obviously covered that, so. Yeah. So you, you were kind of spreading the word. Oh, yeah. Exactly, because not, not a lot of people in the U.S. knew who the band was. Yeah. You know? Um, I saw the Metal Heart Tour uh -huh. in New Jersey okay. with uh, Crocus. And then we opened for them at Lemoore. Right. Yeah. So... Later on. No, that was the only two times I ever saw him. It was insane. The drinking age at that time was lowered to 18 yeah. from 21. And the clubs were just... And it, was, it was total insanity. Um, we played six nights a week. We could have played seven nights a week, you know? Sometimes we'd do two shows in a day. It, it was just absolute insanity. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah. But you survived. Like I said, luckily, luckily we're still alive. So, getting through all that. Um, there was a lot of competition, but there was a lot of camaraderie, too. Um, you know, one, once we got signed to Megaforce, it was a whole different story. Um, and the Megaforce bands all got along pretty well. Um, but in the club scene, yeah, there, there was a lot of competition, but there was a lot of places to play. Yeah. So, like I said, we played six nights a week. And you didn't, you know, you, you rarely played the same place twice. You know, it was, you were just all over the place, anywhere from, you know, all over the East Coast, basically. So... Oh, 
Jeez, we played with everyone, I think. Um, <laughs> anybody who came through Lemoore, we were the house band for a while. So anybody that came through there, we played with them. We opened for them so many times I couldn't count them. Uh, and even I remember opening for them before D was in the band. That's how long ago that was. That was like wow. 1979. So it, it was it was crazy. Mendoza wasn't in the band then either. Okay. It, it, it was two other people. It was very strange. <laughs> so what band was actually that one? That was Twisted Sister. Still. They were, what, what you were around? Or TT Quick. Okay. Actually, what is really funny... You Actually, it might have been, before T.T. Quick was T.T. Quick, the band was called Lazy. Yeah. Sick, lame, and lazy. Then we dropped the sick and lame. So... <laughs> yeah. Yes, he was. Yeah, they had... I guess they had split up a little bit and uh, took a break. And our drummer Eric, his uh, his father, I believe it was at that time, was dying of cancer. So he went home to New Orleans and basically just went on hi hiatus, quit the band, whatever. We didn't know what we were going to do anyway at that point. We had lost a deal with Island, and um, so yeah, so I called him up. And I was like, "Dude, you want to come play with TT Quick for a while?" He's like, "Fuck yeah." <laughs> and it was great. We had a good. It was that was a killer band. It was a lot of fun. I don't know where that came from. That's the first I'm ever hearing of that. Okay. Nah. It's Never cool. heard that one. That was actually in, in Phoenix heavy metal news. Get out of here. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm here to tell you that didn't happen. Gotham. Well, that's a lot of fun, actually. It's uh, Paul Crook from Anthrax, and Meatloaf, of course, um, Scott Metaxas from Profit. There's a, a drummer, Craig Scapa. And uh, they had had this band. I guess in the 90s or 2000s, they had Gotham, and they did just a lot of industrial covers. And I was just hanging out at the studio one day talking, and they were talking about putting Gotham back together, and they, their old singer, there was no possible way he was going to do it. And I was hanging out there, I went, I'll fucking do it. And they were like, what, really? You going to sing that stuff? I'm like, yeah, why not? I like a challenge, right? So, I mean, we do a lot of Manson and... Rob Zombie and, uh, you know, but we do, a, I got him doing a lot of ACDC now too and, you know, and what I consider more my style, but we cover a lot of material, so it, yeah. and it's a lot of fun. We do some mashups, uh, you know, that of our own and record them and, you know, you can find them online, so. Yeah, basically. Never know though, we might take it up to another level and see what happens. So that's the way it sounds. Yeah. We're going to South America in April. I think we'll be recording in hopefully most of the summer. Uh, we got Japan and Australia in November. And you never know what's going to happen else in there, but right now that's, that's the only thing that's on the book, so. Oh, yeah, we're working on them. We're sending ideas back and forth, okay. so we're on it. I don't know yet at this point. I would imagine so. Would you love, would you love to do that? I, you know, I'm I'm a big advocate. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I like working with Andy, right? But he's so, also very busy right now. So of course. I 
would imagine it's not going to be until 2024. Okay. I, I don't see it happening before then. Okay. If we could get it out by Christmas, that would be a miracle. But right. I don't, Christmas, yeah, I don't, I don't see it happening. But again, that's a question for Wolf. You know, I've tossed it around a bunch of times. Um, I have so much material that I could do to put on it um, from the last 30, 40 years that never got released. Whether it's relevant at this point, I don't know. I can always write new ones, too. I don't know. I, I, it's definitely in the back of my mind. I'm, uh, you know, I've, I'm also a... I've been a union electrician for the last 25 years. Yeah. So I'm probably going to retire now. And if I do that, that frees up some time. So yeah. I might just do it. We'll see. And we'll see what happens. Yeah. I'll keep you posted. Hey, you're watching Susie Media. <laughs>